What is going on? And welcome back to iCoach Nutrition Radio. Today's podcast is going to be geared towards my fellow parents and parents to be. Um, this one's going to be all about meal prep strategies for parents. And so, obviously, as y'all know, um, I am a dad of two boys. I have a three and a half year old uh, and an almost one year old here. And so things have gotten a lot more challenging um, in terms of nutrition and living a healthy lifestyle since I've had kids. Um, I'm sure most of my parents here would agree with that and could understand that. Um, and then those that are, you know, future parents here, you'll, you'll, you'll get it, you know, once that time comes. Um, and so what I want to share is just kind of some of the strategies that I use uh, that have really helped me as well as a lot of the strategies that, that I've used with my clients that have helped them um, to, to be able to live a healthier lifestyle um, and, and ultimately be that influence for their kids so that their kids can, you know, adopt and, and live a healthy lifestyle as they start to get older uh, and into an adulthood and be able to, you know, then continue the cycle, right? And, and make this a generational thing where health is prioritized and nutrition is a skill set that's developed. Uh, and living a healthy lifestyle is just part of their lifestyle. It's not something that um, is something that's either on or off, right? And so some of the strategies here are, number one, you've got to get, you got to start building up the skill set. You got to start building up the confidence, right? You've got to be able to navigate through cooking when it comes to just the chaos of having kids. Now, I have two kids. They're both young, right? Um, there are plenty of y'all that have three, four or five kids or whatever. Right. And so it definitely can be even more challenging, the more kids that you have. Um, but this, this, these methods, these methodologies, these strategies, they can pertain to, to anybody with kids. All right. And so when I come back to that confidence and that skill set piece, it's being able to be confident in the kitchen. Right. And for so many people, they're not confident in the kitchen. They're not confident with grocery shopping and cooking and meal prepping. And so when they have kids, well, now it's like absolutely out the door, right? There's like, there's no way in the world that I'm going to make this a priority because I couldn't even do it before I had kids. How am I going to think that I'm going to do it while I have kids, right? Or once I have kids. So I want to give just a few examples, right? So for example, I pretty much, so I, I do all the cooking in our house. You can ask my wife. Um, and I would say pretty much every single night, Monday through Friday, I'm cooking dinner with a three and a half year old who is running around like a crazy person. Although a lot of the times he actually is getting involved with the cooking process. Um, and he loves to cook now. He likes to help me cook. Uh, it can be a little stressful on my end sometimes. Uh, obviously I don't want the kid to burn himself or anything like that. Um, but then I also have an almost one-year-old here who is crawling around the floor and, you know, seeking attention and, you know, getting into things. And so it's, it's really like just constant chaos as I'm cooking dinner every single night by myself, because my wife, right when it hits 4.30, I sign off for the day. My wife goes and works out and does CrossFit. And so I have the kids by myself and I am cooking and pre preparing dinner so that when she gets home at 6.30, we're able to eat dinner together as a family. Um, and so, you know, I obviously post all of my meals here. Y'all see them all. Um, but the strategy in my head is always, how can I build an iCoach plate? What do I have in the, in the house, right? And then how can I build an iCoach plate? And so most of the time, what that looks like is I'm thinking to myself, I'm saying, okay, right? What is the protein source that I'm going to eat? Right? What is the vegetable or, or fruit source that I'm going to eat? Right, And then what is the carbohydrate source that I'm going to eat? And so that allows me to build an iCoach plate, which would mean when I'm with the visual here, when I'm building out the plate, it's a quarter plate protein, a quarter plate carbohydrate, and then a half a plate color. And that allows me to get a balance of macronutrients, meaning protein and fats and carbohydrates, right? so that I'm eating a balanced meal. I'm also providing a balanced meal for my family, right? And this is allowing us to get to the appropriate amount of macronutrients as well as micronutrients, right? So the macronutrients and the portion sizes of the meal of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and then the micronutrients, meaning the vitamins and minerals, right? Making sure that we're eating majority whole foods and good quality food, right? So when this process starts, right? Most of the time, the way that I'm going about this is I'm grabbing the protein source. So examples of this could mean 
chicken, beef, turkey, salmon, shrimp, um, bison, um, eggs, um, you know, really the list goes on and on and on here, right? But it's just thinking to myself, a, a protein source, right? Um, and so with that protein source, then I'm asking myself, what is the carbo carbohydrate source that I'm going to get? So most of the time, what we do is we do some type of potato, whether it's white potato or sweet potato or purple potato, um, or some type of like potato medley there with a combination of multicolored potatoes um, or rice, white rice, brown rice, um, wild rice, um, you know, quinoa, uh, tortillas, um, bread, um, corn, beans, right? The list kind of goes on and on here with these as well. And then with the color, this would be vegetables or fruits or a combination of both, right? And so most of the time here, the vegetables would be like broccoli or cauliflower or Brussels sprouts or snap peas or green beans um, or like a lettuce mix, like spinach um, or with fruit, you know, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, bananas, um, oranges, right? The list goes on and on and on, right? We could, we could come up with tons of different options here. But again, what do I have in my house, right? What do I have available in either the freezer or the fridge, right? Or the pantry there to be able to start to create these meals, right? And so the skill set and the confidence for me has developed over the years, right? When I was 18 years old, I did not have the same confidence and skill set as I do now at 30 years old, almost 31 years old. Right? I've been in the kitchen learning and developing the skill set over the last 12 years, 13 years almost here. Right? And there's been a lot of trial and error. There's been a, a very much so a progression throughout this time period. Right? But I'm so grateful that I've made that progression because what's ultimately happened is I've gotten a lot more confident in developing the skill set so that when it did come time for me to have kids, Right. I was able to, you know, feel pretty confident in the kitchen, even with the chaos of having kids. Um, and so coming back to this example here, most of the time what I'm doing with the protein source is I'm either cooking it right there on the stove top in a pan, right, and sauteing it, or I'm baking it in the oven, or I'm air frying it, or I'm cooking it on the grill. Right. Those are really like the four main cooking methods that I'd be using there with the protein sources. With the carb sources, most of the time what I'm doing there is I'm either air frying it, right, or baking it in the oven, or maybe it's just like microwave rice that I can literally just microwave, or some tortillas that I can heat up on the stove top there, um, or some bread that I don't have to do anything to, right? And then for the color, most of the time with the vegetables, again, I'm going to be air frying those, right? Um, or I could do like a, sh a, a, a a pan sheet, right? And, and be able to bake those in the oven and roast those in the oven. Um, or with the fruit, obviously, I don't really have to do anything there except just wash them and maybe cut them, right? And so this is a very just easy and simplistic approach to be able to make meals, which you'll always see me post, right? This meal took five minutes. This meal took 10 minutes. This meal took 15 minutes. This meal took 20 minutes, right? But really, 20 minutes is kind of like the max time that I will take to cook any of these types of meals. Um, and I could give you, you know, if you just look through the photos on my social media and any of these platforms, you'll see all of these meals and all of these meals are taken, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 minutes at most to make. Right. And so an example of something that I just made right here for lunch would be, I actually made salmon, sweet potatoes and snap peas. Right. And so what I did here with this one, the salmon was baked in the oven, right. At 15 minutes. These sweet potatoes were air fried for 15 minutes and the snap peas were air fried for 10 minutes. Okay. And all of these things are happening at the same exact time, which is what leads to a meal that's done in 20 minutes or less here. Right. And so this is just, you know, this is something that really could be applied to, you know, parents or really honestly, just anybody um, in terms of meal prep and, and understanding that meal prep does not have to be where you spend your whole entire Sunday meal prepping all of your meals and Tupperware them all and putting them into the fridge. Like, to be honest, I hate eating like reheated meals. Maybe I could do it like one day later, but I definitely don't want to be doing that, you know, five, seven days out there. Like I'm just, it doesn't really taste that great. Just microwaving your meals like that. And I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder or a physique competitor or something like that. And, and 
you know, if you're watching this, you probably aren't trying to be either, right? And so you don't have to feel like you have to go to these crazy extremes, right? For you, you just have to learn how to start getting more confident in the kitchen. You have to learn how to start getting more confident with grocery shopping and cooking and doing just minimal meal prep, right? A lot of the times meal prep could just be you're cooking dinner, you're cooking extra so that you can then be able to have, you know, food to, to make for lunch the next day if you're not going to have time to cook a fresh new lunch there. So um, as we're kind of bringing this all together and wrapping this all, all up, the, the big takeaway here is that before you ever even go grocery shopping, you need to kind of have a list, whether you want to write it down or have it in your head as to, hey, what are the protein sources that I'm going to buy for this week, right? What are the carb sources I'm going to buy for this week, right? What are the color sources, aka, you know, vegetables and fruits that I'm going to buy for this week? That way, when you come home to either cook for a specific meal or cook a few meals, right, you have those options and you can ask yourself, what's the protein I'm going to pick? What's the carb I'm going to pick? What's the color I'm going to pick, right? Now I can cook all of these things kind of simultaneously here while I'm dealing with the structured chaos or unstructured chaos of having kids and everything else that's going on there. And I can still be able to cook healthy meals and provide healthy meals for my family so that we can all prioritize our health together, right? And nine times out of 10, as your kids start getting older, right, or if they're already older, you know, again, Josiah started doing this at probably two years old, three years old. Um, so getting your kids involved in the process, right, that's something that is, is just invaluable. It can help so, so, so much with getting kids to eat food and get, get them to eat healthier food and get them to enjoy that. My Josiah asked me pretty much with every single thing that he eats now. He goes, he goes, he goes, Dad, does this make me run fast? Does this make me get strong? Does this make me jump high? Right. And he asked it about everything. And my kids don't only eat healthy food, they eat unhealthy food too. Right. It's a balance, right? If you can eat like 80% of the foods that you eat are whole foods, or 90% of the foods you eat are whole foods, right? And they're healthy food and they're good quality food. Well, that's where that 10 or 20% dependent upon your goals can come in with enjoying other things, right? The other things for my kids are like, they love getting my wife, they love getting like Chick-fil-A, they love going out to eat, they love uh, popsicles and ice cream and these types of things, right? They love snacking on, um, you know, whatever, chips and popcorn and these types of things. So we're a product of what we do the majority of the time, not the minority of the time, right? And ultimately what we've got to work on here together, if you're, you know, if you're wanting to live a healthy lifestyle, we've got to get you cooking the majority of your own food, all right? So that you actually know what's going into your food. Because if you're just constantly eating out at fast food restaurants and just even regular restaurants there, it's going to be a lot more challenging to know what is actually going into your food. It's going to be more challenging to make healthy decisions, right? I always say it's not hard to go out to eat and make a healthy decision, or it's not, go, it's not hard to go out to eat and, and eat healthy. It's hard to go out to eat and make a healthy decision, right? And so these are just some of the things to think about here as you're going through this process. But just understand that if you're struggling with cooking healthy and eating healthy, um, you know, right now as a parent with kids, young or old, um, just know that there is a belief or a skill or a trait uh, that is lacking right? And if you can start to identify that and bridge the gap, well, then you're all of a sudden going to start, you know, believing that it's possible. You're going to start to develop the skill set that helps you to make it possible. And you're going to start to acquire the traits of a person um, that prioritize, prioritizes living a healthy lifestyle. But it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a month. It's going to be a process that takes years and years and years of trusting in the process, falling in love with the journey, making it something that is a priority in your life, right? And realizing that it takes time. It takes time to challenge yourself into being able to change habits and adopt what it means to live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. So I hope this helps my fellow parents out there. I know it can be a challenge, um, but I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, just give yourself some grace and know that it's going to be a process. It's going to be a journey, but if it's worth it to you and if, if you want to make it a priority, 
You absolutely can. If you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always here. I'm a text message away or a message away on social media uh, or comment away on social media. So please let me know if you have any questions. I would love to help. I am on a mission to help parents out there, to help families out there learn how to live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. It's worth it. You're worth it. Your kids are worth it. Um, and I would love to be, you know, that source of, of information there, um, you know, that reputable source that you can trust and that can help you to learn how to live a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. So guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. As always, I hope y'all have an amazing day. And uh, until next time. Thanks, guys.